Hello and welcome to Through Our Eyes, a program brought to you by the Department of Community and Cultural Affairs. I'm your host, Heather Whalen. Today we have an interesting guest who's going to share with us his childhood experiences growing up in Bermuda. And so we have this wonderful opportunity to visualize, to learn, and hear about Bermuda back in the day through the eyes of Dr. George Leslie Cook. Welcome, Dr. Cook. Thank you for having me. It is wonderful. We are delighted to have you and looking forward to this chat. Yes. So, let's start with talking about your childhood. Yes. Where did you grow up? I was born uh, in 1938 in Cemetery Road area uh, of Pembroke. Uh, my father worked for Belco at the time and we lived in a cottage. Uh, but then he left and went to work on the base. And so we, then we moved out towards Spanish Point. Uh -huh. And uh, we lived in a house uh, near the Admiralty House stables. Mm -hmm. I, I have no memories of my life in Cemetery Road and very little of um, in Spanish Point near mm -hmm. the uh, Admiralty House. But then we moved again to Cox's Hill area. And that's the area I remember uh, from my childhood. Um, I remember that uh, neighborhood particularly well because it was a very, it was a mixed neighborhood. Mm. We had uh, so a, a black family who lived at sort of at the end of the road down on the, near the main road, and Tucker their name was. Mm. And, um, and the area was itself very mixed, and so I had lots of friends who were you know, we're, 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 I always sort of look back on and laugh that we went off to separate schools and we came back and played home, played together, played cowboys and Indians together, you know, and we thought nothing of it. Now that's interesting, yeah, that um, during a time when there was segregation yes, in terms yes, of education, exactly, exactly. yet you played together. Yeah, yeah. So what was that like? When you well, went to separate say, schools, we, we but you came back. Of, I, I thought nothing of mm -hmm. it. I never asked any questions about it, at least it not at that stage. Um, the, it was a natural thing for us to be playing together because we were around each other all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, what I think I value most of all mm -hmm. uh, from that period was the fact that I grew up in a large family. I mean, I'm one of nine. You're one of nine? Yes, uh, I'm number seven. <laughs> oh my. And uh, I gather that my name George comes from the fact that my birthday is on the anniversary of the coronation of George the Sixth. So, ah. So I always say George is a regal name. George. <laughs> so where did you get Leslie? Where well, did your parents I, I get the name Leslie? the story is Leslie was the name of my sister Helen's boyfriend of the time, you know. By the time you get to seven kids, what names are you going to use? <laughs> kind of and so I think Leslie just happened to be very handy. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I had uh, another, my next eldest brother, Walter. Mm -hmm. See, he was only 23 months older than me. Okay. And so uh, my birthday is in May, as <clears throat> I said, and his birthday is in June. So there was always one month when I was only one year younger than him and then two years, you know, and I could mm -hmm. never figure that one out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Next year I'm going to catch you <laughs> up. <laughs> so did you and Walter, were you um, most close? Oh, indeed. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, we were very, almost like twins. Mm. And it seemed like we always managed to find other groups brothers, other mm -hmm. uh, who became our pals. Right. And um, and it, it, that's the way it happened three times that we had, mm -hmm. as we were growing up, that there were other boys that we palled around with all the time. And so uh, what the area where I s remember this especially is the Mills Creek area mm -hmm. and, and, and mm -hmm. Tulo Valley, that, those mm -hmm. areas, because it was open country, mm -hmm. and uh, so we had we were free, you know. That mm. was the main thing. So, yeah. did you and your brother and these other guys did you get up to any unique adventures? Well, let's put pranks. It, you're saying, did we get into trouble? That's what you want to know. <laughs> um, no, we never got into trouble. We had uh -huh. lots of opportunities uh -huh. to get into trouble, but somehow I think 
Walter and I always knew, uh, and I, in the back of my head, I could always remember hearing myself say, "What mom? What would mom say?" Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. what you know, if we got into trouble, it would come home, right? So, uh, no, it, 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 it. I don't ever remember my mother physically. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 what's what? Reprimanding us uh -huh. in any harsh way. Uh -huh. uh, Except that, of course, we fought too, naturally. Okay, yeah. Um, and so I, was, I have this memory of her having a uh, oleander switch, uh, you know, Ooh. a curvy one, you know, uh -huh. uh, on the top of the safe, because well, we had no refrigerator. Right, right. And um, so if we were fighting away, I remember her laughing her head, you know, beating us with a stick, saying, Stop it, you fool! Stop it, you fool! <laughs> because we felt nothing. But, you know, uh, so we just grew up together very close like that, and uh -huh. as I say, we had these very close friends, and we, you know, we just messed around all the time around Mills Creek and Tulo Valley, that area, mm -hmm. playing games like Cowboys and Indians, you know, uh, it just ran wild, you know. Uh -huh. So what and, other games did you play? Cowboy and Indians, yeah, yes. Yeah, well, that was the natural, uh -huh. trucks, of trucks, course. Trucks, yes. Yes. Um, it was little things. Uh, one of my earliest memories uh, uh -huh. from that, uh, period was when my eldest brother Francis mm. um, was going to go overseas and I can see it now mm. um, and I'm down you know on my hands and knees you know, on the mm -hmm. ground with my little truck down in front of Mr. Tucker's house Mr. and Mrs. Tucker's house uh -huh. and he's standing in his uniform and I'm looking up and he's looking down at me and he says I'm going away for a while uh -huh. and I said okay I'll see you when you come back uh huh. Yeah. That's how innocent it was, you know. I mean, I had no idea, you know. And he so, was, when he said he was going away for a while, and he was in his uniform, he was yeah. He was what was he over, referring to? He was to? getting ready to go overseas in the Second World War. In the Second World yeah, War. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, as a child, it you knew nothing, and it meant nothing, you know, mm. to you at the time. And I don't really have any strong memories of the. Second World War, except uh, one occasion. Uh, well, we, we used to go over the hill behind us, so to speak, uh, over to um, Deep Bay, mm -hmm. where we used to, yes. go, we used to yes. go swimming all the yes. time. And I remember coming over the hill once and looking out onto the North Shore, and it was full of ships. All, um, you know, battleship grade right, type ships. Right. I don't know where they were going or mm -hmm. coming somewhere. Maybe they're going over to Europe or not. I don't know. But that memory is the one memory I have of, of, the, of the Second World War. That uh, stayed with you because you're still talking about it. Well, it's there it. vividly. Vividly, yes. I always say, you remember that famous uh, vi um, image in uh, The Longest Day when the German soldier in the... Mm -hmm. in the um, um, battlement looks out and sees the ships. It yes. Was, I think of it like that. <laughs> yeah, that must so. have been. Was it terrifying for you? Oh, no. Okay, no, because no. you didn't realize no, no. what we it were, was. We're going swimming. Oh, there you go. That's more important, isn't <laughs> it? I loved swimming, of course. Did you? And, uh, as I got a little older, um, uh, I m managed to, f uh, I guess I got a, a swimming mask handed down, mm. you know, mm. um, and a pair of old flippers or something, and uh -huh. so I would spend hours snorkeling, so, you know, around, uh, around Spanish Point, those islands out there at yes. the end of Spanish Point, yeah. because there was all kinds of wonderful fish and mm -hmm. uh, um, corals and sea fans and things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, I think I knew enough not to bother them, not to right. take anything. Right. Yeah. I don't know where that came from. Right. Um, but, uh, I mean, the other thing I remember was, uh, vividly, was the importance of school. Uh, absolutely important. Um, Where did you go to school in Bermuda? Uh, well, I went first to <clears throat> Delwood School. Mm -hmm. um, I always say that was the school of the poor whites at those days. I mean, we lived in uh, Cox's Hill. Mm -hmm. and we used to walk to school and walk back. Walk, yeah. walk. so yeah. there was no, walk. there were no 
No, well, even horse buses at that later time. Later, a bike they? came along, and I had to tow my sister. Ah. And uh, I terrified her <laughs> because uh, we would come down uh, the hill near uh, Salter's Grammar School, down uh -huh. there where, the, where St. John's Church is, and I would yell at her, "Don't steer! Don't steer!" And of course, it's because she was terrified right, about right. steering the bike. But the mo no, mostly it was walking and. Mm. Um, it, and that, that's what sort of kept you fit and kept you... True, uh, um, true. You know. And when you left Delwood, where did you go after that? Uh, well, I was, I was very lucky, I think, not uh -huh. only having a mother who turned up to everything. Right. Who therefore, you know, conveyed the message that this is important. Yes. I yes. had the advantage also of these older brothers. Ah, yes. And, uh, and sister who had achieved things. And mm. so it was a natural, in a way, mm -hmm. for me to think, well, I have to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was the teachers. Mm -hmm. I, 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 can, I could name you all my teachers. Mm -hmm. I, have my, uh, I have all my report cards. I kept them. I you have, still have I that? Have the, I can remember the first one. Believe that this or is not, George is a joy to teach. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, but Wonderful. that was from my teacher. But uh, uh, Miss Hunt. Uh -huh. And uh, what at the point is that I had a headmaster, a man, Jimmy Wyatt, he was, uh -huh. uh, who knew from the day I entered school, mm -hmm. I would have to be promoted in order that I would be eligible mm -hmm. to attempt the Board of Education scholarship so that I would be able to go to secondary school. Okay. So, the day I entered, uh -huh. it's in my report card. Okay. From that kind of nurturing, nurturing. you know. The and he saw something in you. Well, he, yes. He identified. Yes. Was yes. able to identify. I mean, uh, yes, you had he, the ability. He could say, yes, another good <coughs> book, right? Right. That's what he could say. But he also knew that I had to be nurtured and yes. developed. Yes. So we, the combination of parents who cared, yes. brothers and sisters who led by example, mm -hmm. and teachers mm. who cared, that was what was so important. It's hard not to emphasize the importance mm. of the role that the teachers played in yes. nurturing mm -hmm. the interest. In addition to that, um, my mother was a book person. No music, but mm -hmm. books, books everywhere. She I always, whenever she right. had any spare time, she was reading. reading. What kinds of books was she reading? Oh, it was, uh, she, <coughs> she would have read Shakespeare, I believe. Really? Uh, I don't actually remember that. One of my brothers says that. Yes, uh, yes. Because we'd come home and say, uh, uh, oh, well, we're reading, you know, Macbeth. And she'd, oh, yes, I've read that. <laughs> mm. So she valued the she, education oh, that you get Absolutely. from reading books, and not yes. so that's why she encouraged you yeah. and your brothers and sisters and with regard Dad to school. Was a perfectionist, you know, he ah. was, see, he was an electrician. Okay. And if you're going to do the job, do it properly. Uh huh. Right? Uh huh. If not, start it. Take it out. Start yes. again. Right? Yes. That was him. So, uh, and if you're not, gonna, if you're going to start the job, finish it. So those were wonderful values that well, your parents instilled in you. Yeah. Well, I hope our children have them too. <laughs> I do too. I do too. And the importance of education yeah. and the roles that the yeah. home, the school, yeah. and the students and yeah. what they bring to yeah. wanting to learn. You know, I still remember some of friends, uh, you know, today who I went to school with and, mm. and the games we played. Mm. I mean, uh, this would be common, although I went to a white school. Mm. The games he played, the marbles, you know, right. uh, the tops, yes, you know, yes. uh, the skipping ropes, uh -huh. and all these sorts of things were common to all of us with not, without us realizing it, you know. Mm. And, um, and as I say, as we went home, we played, played cowboys and Indians with colored black right. kids. Yeah. Colored. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm dating myself. You're dating, yes. Kids okay. of color. Look what kids I have of color, that, right? yes. You know, but I mean, that, we never thought of it that right. way. That I is didn't just, anyway. Right, right. It was, they were our neighbors. They were your neighbors, yeah. and so and you accepted them. You accepted that. Mm. They accepted us, you know, and that's, that's it, the way it was. Uh, I, I don't have any um, really uh, sort of strong memories of a, an adventure or anything like okay. that. Okay, okay. Um, I just have uh, memories of uh, uh, freedom, mm. uh, of... of um, a simple 
gentle life, life, I think it was. And you said that your parents had nine children. Yes. And it was during the war, war period yes. when things must have been very tight. How did your parents cope with that and feeding well, nine children and themselves? Yeah, um, I can remember once my father was earning six pound tens a week and had seven children kind of thing. Mm. Uh, but the funny thing is that even today uh, there are things that we remember uh, my mother cooking mm. that remain favorites. Such as? Uh, uh, she was a whiz with corned beef. Oh, my <laughs> mother was too. Tins, tins, tins of corned beef. Right? Uh -huh. uh, uh, so corned beef cakes in a, okay. were, uh, remain a favorite. Yes. Uh, our, our codfish cakes, of course, remain Love a, it. a favorite. Yes. These kinds of things. Yes. Simple, uh, but filling. You yes. Know that, because that's what she had to think about. How was I going to fill up these kids? Right, and uh, stretch it to go a long the way. Other, the memory I have is of, uh, we had this big table mm -hmm. um, that we all sat around. And, Wonderful. Um, so it was a uh, for dinner, for, for right. supper. Not uh -huh. dinner, supper. Dinner, yes. No, supper. Supper. <laughs> and uh, that would it all be there, you know. Um, not all at once, by the uh -huh. way. My mother never, ever saw all her children together in one place. Why was that? Just because of the age difference? Well, because by the time the, you know, the younger one came along, the elder, eldest was gone. Right, right. It went off, you know, called, um, went off into the army or something right. like that. This is... And, uh, but it was always um, a gathering, you know. So ah, lovely. That, I think, it was also, you can't put a price on that kind of thing. Absolutely. You're yeah. so right. It, it was just, You're so it, right. I grew up in a nurturing mm -hmm. Environment. Uh, environment. That and, is wonderful. And it was it was reinforced everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. family, friends, friends, teachers, so forth. And I just want to go back to one thing. You talked about your mother's love of books. How oh. did that influence you? Very briefly, we well, we're wrapping up now, but I do could say, well, books were natural. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, they were there everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, they, you know, and a dictionary was there, always there. Okay. Um, so. If you didn't know what a word is, you looked it up. You looked it up. Were there any um, subjects that were your favorites to For me, read about? Um, well, as a kid, um, I, 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 I think I instinctively took the historical things. Mm. Uh, as, um, as a child, I can remember reading a book, you know, sort of uh, adventures in history kind of thing in okay. school. And uh, as I got a little older into my, um, you know, around 8, 10, 12, so mm -hmm. forth, mm -hmm. I got very, very interested, as a boy would, in, in uh, the Second World War, you know. Mm -hmm. And my eldest brother, Francis, because he had served overseas. Right. And so I was instinctively interested in uh -huh. all of his, his stories and yes. escapades. And um, that's when I, I remember this story of looking up and, uh -huh. you know, I'll see you later. I'll, I'm going away for a little while. Well, look, I'll see you when you come back, kind of. Okay. Uh, but uh, it just, it was a natural kind uh -huh. of interest. interest. Uh -huh. And um, so when I uh, went, history was always my favorite subject. Uh -huh. always, I can remember that from, from school. And, um, but when I came to go off to university, that was not top in my mind. No, what was? Not top in my mind was how to have a profession. Ah. Like okay. my brothers. Like okay. your brothers. Okay, the influence of <laughs> the brothers, the older brothers. And, uh, and also, how were you going to be independent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or even into politics, you know. Okay. Not that I would have been a good politician, I don't think so. <laughs> so the idea was. Um, I thought first I'd be a lawyer, then I was advised against that because even then I was advised that Bermuda was, had already had too many lawyers. Even then? <laughs> so so I, I followed uh, one of my, my brother John who uh -huh. was, um, had gone into accounting, so I mm -hmm. went into accounting first. So my, my first degree is a commerce degree. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't did know that. that. First. I did accounting. So how long did you um, pursue that? <laughs> well, that was three, four years, 60, 1960. Uh -huh. uh, but then I realized I, I need to do something I liked doing. <laughs> you didn't like numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so I did history. So it was a very important uh, lesson for me. When uh -huh. I found myself uh -huh. in a position of advising students, mm -hmm. I said, number one, you've got to find what you like. like. Doing. Absolutely. They say, don't Absolutely. think in, do, do, in doing what you think you ought to, to do. do. 
do right. what they like Lyle. to do. Because then it'll never seem like yeah. work. It'll and always furthermore, be in charge. don't be afraid to change your mind. Yeah. So true, yeah. Yeah. so true. Yeah. That is wise yeah. um, words of advice from you. It will. And in fact, I can remember vividly saying to some of these kids, you know, change is the name of the game. Right? You know don't what? be surprised. You know, 99% of you will change your mind. You were so, ahead of your time. Well, no, no, no. It was, again, it was a natural. Uh -huh. um, it, 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 it did come out of my, partly out of my own uh -huh. experience. Right. Um, but partly also of all that nurturing and all that mm -hmm. support and so forth that had come my way, mm -hmm. fortunately. Uh, and fortunately also I had a series of very good experiences, terrific learning experiences. Uh, in, when I was in university, um, uh, I worked for an, an organization called Frontier College, okay. a Canadian organization. And uh, it was an adult education uh, type of institution. Mm. I worked on a, a railway extra gangs, labor gangs, labor. I was a laborer. Okay. I was a laborer teacher. Interesting. And so... Dr. Cook? Yes. Let's take a quick break, because okay. I want to hear much more oh. about that. Oh, okay. So let's, if we may, let's okay. just take a, a pause, a break for a few okay. seconds, okay. and then we will come back okay. to that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. We will be right back. This is fascinating. Been up on your roof lately? Checking your downflow pipes and keeping your roof clean and freshly painted are essentials for maintaining clean water. Regular tank checks, cleaning, and use of approved disinfection processes are all necessary measures to ensure safe drinking water. Remember, when in doubt, boil it. This is a message from the Department of Health and Family Services. So here we are, back at Four Ways In with Dr. Cook, and he was just talking about being a laborer teacher. So I want us to hear more about that experience and others. Yeah. Dr. Cook, tell us more about... Well, I should explain first of all that I didn't win a scholarship in order to go off to university, so I had to work all the way through. Uh, I always were. I had. I was a job as a waiter all the okay. time while I was mm -hmm. in university. Uh, and um, anyway, one of the jobs I had um, while in Canada uh, was working for an organization uh, which employed university students mm -hmm. um, to go out and work in laboring situations mm. where there would be uh, large numbers of immigrant workers, mm -hmm. primarily. And I worked on a railway gang. A uh, railway in, gang? In northern Ontario, the black fly mosquito country. Yeah. Let me tell you, the boondocks. The boondocks. <laughs> okay. uh, and uh, it was, a, to me, a wonderful experience. Why? Well, uh, I don't, maybe it wasn't, wasn't hard for me uh, to have this thinking of it because of my background. Mm. And that is to say, the most of the men, there was not a one woman on the, in the gang, mm. not one. Mm. Uh, the men were mostly Portuguese, mm. some Italians, mm -hmm. uh, some of whom were entirely illiterate, profoundly illiterate. Okay. So I worked along with men whose level of education was infinitely less than what I was experiencing mm. by being at university. And it was, in every sense, an exchange, but I had to mm. learn how to survive. Yes, right? yes. 10 hours a day, six days a week kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And they had wanted to get from me right. some learning from mostly just to learn the English language mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. to get by. Right. Uh, so the lesson that I learned from that was you do not treat any person with disrespect. Mm. You respect every person, God. no that's, matter. That's such a and powerful lesson. And if you lesson. see a person in the gutter, yes. you do not walk by. Yeah. You stop and you do what you can to assist. Oh, Dr. That's, you know, what, and I can remember saying, uh, Cook, you chose to be here. Mm. So what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could walk away if you want. 
Yes. But you'd never live it down, would you? That's right. So, whatever you do, mm -hmm. you do the best you can while you're at it. And those were some of the values instilled That's by your father and mom. That, I got that from school as well. Yes. Whatever you do, you yes. do the best you can, can, and you do not run away from it. You, you face challenges. It. You finish it. Uh, you deal with it. Okay? Yes. And then you can leave it saying, yes, okay, I have done the best I can with what I've had. And the other thing that I uh, value, especially uh, from that period of time, was the fact that I was able to benefit, although I was not a Canadian, I was able to benefit from Canadian uh -huh. education and Canadian awards. Mm -hmm. And it was a Canadian award that got me to go to Oxford. So that's how okay. I got uh, to go to Oxford that's from okay. Canadian sources, mm. not from anything else. You know? Okay. And uh, so it, 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 it made me feel valued, of yes. course. Yes. You know? But what are you going to get back is the question. Yes. And that is always what has motivated me, I think, in, in my life. Is what is he going to give, gonna give back? And as an educator, yes. your final job was at the Bermuda College. Yes. Well, I retired as president. You retired as president, yeah. right. Well, um, I had, when I finished uh, my doctoral work at, um, in England, I uh, had a teaching job at a place called Simon Fraser University mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. British Columbia. Mm -hmm. It happened that it was a brand new university. Okay. And so this was a wonderful experience for me from the standpoint of what happened next. Okay. That is to say, I had to uh, uh, develop programs from scratch, uh -huh. develop courses from scratch, create whole things from zero. Uh -huh. That is the wonderful experience that I had there. Mm -hmm. So that when I came back to Bermuda, mm -hmm. uh, to the Bermuda College, and Jimmy Brock is the man who is responsible for that. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, I knew what I had to do. I knew mm -hmm. how it could be done mm. uh, to create something, mm -hmm. and not from nothing. There was a foundation uh, built upon A-levels and so forth. Yes, yes. But the issue was how to gain something without losing anything. Brilliant. So, uh, so that's that's. To me, that's the proudest part in my life, in actually, life. I think, is that period when I was at um, Arts and Science at Bermuda College. At Bermuda College. Because we created um, a program that, well, I think the whole um, academic record of, of the Bermuda College rests mm. on that. It does. This has been so fascinating. I have learned so much from you. And I think just in closing, number one, I want to thank you. Thank you for what you've given to Bermuda. Thank you for how you've nurtured our children. And what you just said, you've done the best you could with what, what you had. had. Yeah. <laughs> Those are pearls of wisdom, Dr. Mm -hmm. Cook. And I thank you. Well, thank Is there you. any last thing that you want to share with us? We're in this lovely facility, thanks to Four Ways In. <laughs> yeah, yes, and indeed. it's indeed very yeah, beautiful. Yes, yes. Is there any one last thing that you want to share oh, based dear. on your wisdom that you've gained over the years? I, no, I do think this notion of giving back, mm. uh, back to the community, back to your family, yes. you know, back to the people around you. Yes. You receive so much from others. Yes. Yeah. You can't put a price on it, you That's know? Right. And you don't often know what they are even. That's right. And you know, so therefore, what are you going to do? You're here. Yes. What are you going, going to, do to do about it? Do something practical. You don't have to be strange, just be a little bit unusual. I'll tell you one story on that. Uh -huh. I love, I'm a fanatic about litter. Oh. So I pick up litter all the time and I was at Flats Post Office and this gentleman says, oh, he says, I want to thank you for doing that. And I said, well, thank you, sir. Not many people say thing, anything to me unless they haven't seen me. And then he said to me, why do you do this? And I said, well, one, what if I didn't do it? Number two, well, it's my little contribution mm -hmm. to b keep a mutual. And number three, I think my mama would approve. She would be proud. Yes. I <laughs> oh, Dr. So, Cook. Uh, so uh, I then asked him, I said, so when you asked me the question, uh -huh. did you think I was strange? Uh -huh. He goes, no. You could see he thought I was a weirdo. You know, and then he come out with unusual. 
unusual. Oh, okay. I said, that's great. I can live with that. Good. So that was my message. You don't have to be straight. Just be a little bit unusual. Just be a little bit unusual and give back. <laughs> and certainly you have. Dr. Cook, thank you so very much. Yeah, you, you have really inspired me and shown the hope that we have for our country still is there. We want to thank Four Ways In for hosting us. I'm Heather Whalen. We look forward to you joining with us next time.